Hey folks, uh, graphing more complicated rational functions. I'm going to do this in a couple of lessons here, and you're going to probably be hearing school bells going off, so uh, I'm doing this uh, on my prep. So anyway, so our question here, what features are helpful to identify the graph of rational functions? Okay, so when we're graphing these guys, okay, so don't let that scare you, you guys. These are just polynomials. It's like, would be like, you know, 3x to the fifth plus 4x to the uh, fourth and so on, all the way down to plus seven or something. Okay, and this is another polynomial expression right here. Okay, so so here, um, uh, the x-intercepts are when the top equals zero, when the numerator equals zero. So if we can factor that and set it equal to zero, it's going to go across the x-axis at those numbers. We have examples of those. The vertical asymptotes um, are when the bottom equals zero, okay? And then, um, so so we look at the degrees, and the degrees are these powers. So we look at this power. This stuff is just, it becomes insignificant after a while. So we're looking at these powers. I mean, it's not insignificant. It helps us get asymptotes and other things, but, but we're looking at the degrees, the biggest powers on tops and on bottom. So our horizontal asymptotes are determined by the degrees, and if, the top is less than the bottom, then y equals zero is our horizontal asymptote. That's just our, our and we have an example of that. That's our x-axis is y equals zero. If, um, if uh, they equal each other, if they're the same degrees, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals this number over this number, okay? And if you need to reduce it, then reduce it. So like if you had like a six halves right there, then the horizontal asymptote would be six over two, which would be three, y equals three. Okay, and if the top is bigger than the bottom, then it has what's called a slant asymptote. It does not have a horizontal asymptote. And you get your slant asymptote by dividing, by long division, by dividing the bottom into the top. Okay, sometimes you can use synthetic division. Okay, so there's some of the bells. That's our warning bell. Okay, so let's state the domain and range of this guy. Okay, so uh, here's our rules that we have right there. Okay, so does the top equal zero? Six will never equal zero, so um, uh, there are no um, x-intercepts. Let's go in order. I have it here. So since the numerator degree, the degree in the numerator is zero, x to six, you know, there's no x's, so the degree is zero, and the degree in the denominator is two. Since the numerator is less than the denominator, the degrees, then there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, which is just our x-intercept, okay? Six will never equal zero, so there's no x-intercepts, you guys, okay? Um, and then uh, the denominator, I can never make this equal to zero. X squared plus one, I cannot ever make equal to zero. If it was X squared minus one, I could. I could factor that. But X squared plus one, I can never make it equal to zero. So that just means there's no vertical asymptotes. Okay, there's the last bill. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so um, so if we just set up a chart and just start plugging in some points. So let's plug in x equals negative 3. Now, when I square negative 3, it's going to give me the same as positive 3 squared. So I'll plug in negative 3, and it'll give me the same values, okay? So 6 over negative 3 squared is 6 over, um, and then plus 1 is 9 plus 1, which is 10. 6 tenths is 0. 0.6. Okay, so to the left here uh, at negative 3, we get 0.6, and to the right at, at positive 3, we get 0.6. Remember, this is an asymptote, so, or asymptote, some teachers say. I don't know. I guess more teachers say asymptotes. I've always said asymptotes, but whatever. Um, so it's flaring down towards this asymptote right here, y equals 0, Okay. All right, so let's plug in. Uh, so I'm suspecting um, if it's flaring down, it's doing something like this on both sides. It's probably going up. Let's plug in negative 2. So negative 2 squared plus 4 is going to be um, uh, 4 plus, did I say plus 4, plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5, so 6 fifths is uh, about 1.2. So we go uh, to the left 2, up about 1.2, and to the right 2. Let's try 1. So 1 squared plus 1 is uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. We get 3. Okay. Um, uh, 6 over 2 is 3. So to the left one, up 3. To the right one, up 3. All right, let's plug in 0. We get 0 squared plus 1 is 6 over 1, which is 6. Okay, so my graph is looking something like this. It goes up and it 
cups. It makes a little roundy right there. And if you're not sure, plug in a half. If we plug in a half, one half squared is one fourth. So one fourth plus one is one and one fourth or five fourths and you invert and multiply. Anyways, you're going to get like five point something right there. Okay, so what happens is, is it just makes a little rounded cusp up there. Okay, so there's our graph right there. All right, it says state the domain and range. So my domain is how far does it go to the left and to the right? It goes to the left forever and to the right forever. So all real numbers. The range is it doesn't go up forever. It peaks out there at six. So it includes six and it doesn't touch zero. So it's in between zero and six, but we're including six and not zero right there. All right, let's try another one here. Okay, so here I don't know what order I did. Okay, so the x-intercepts are when the top equals 0. So set 2x squared equal to 0, we get x equals uh, 0. So there's an x-intercept right there, okay? And then uh, uh, we, we factor the denominator, x squared minus 9 factors to x plus 3, x minus 3. So when the denominator equals 0 at plus or minus 3, that gives us these vertical asymptotes. So our graph is increasingly getting close to. Okay, we do have a horizontal asymptote. We look at the degrees on these. So the degrees are both 2. They're equal. So um, uh, the, the horizontal asymptote is the reduced value of these leading coefficients, 2 over 1. So that's 2. So here's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. All right, and then how does it approach these? We just start plugging in. I'm going to make a t-chart right here. So there's a t-chart and just start plugging in. Let's plug in negative 5. Negative 5 squared is going to give us the same as positive 5 squared. So we get um, 2 times 5 squared, which is uh, 2 times 25 is 50. And this is going to be 25 minus 9. 50, uh, 25 minus 9 is uh, 16. So 50 over 16 is about three points, I don't know, one-ish, I would guess, okay? So, so when we go to the left five, we go up a little bit over three. Here's three right here, so a little bit over three, okay? And then let's plug in um, uh, negative four. Let's see what happens at negative four. We get 4.6, okay? So that tells me that the graph is doing something like that. It's approaching those asymptotes right there. All right, let's 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 see what's happening in here. I know it's going right there, so let's see. Let's go, let's do a plug in negative 2. So if we plugged in negative 2 right there, it's going to be the same as positive 2 squared. When we plug those in, we get an about a negative 1.6. And we could plug in negative 1 also, you guys. I didn't, but if I did do negative 1, 1 squared is 1 times 2. We get 2 over 1 minus 9 is negative 8. We get a negative 1 fourth. So that would be like right about there. And over here, okay, and it makes like a, a horseshoe, an upside down horseshoe right there, okay? So our domain and range, you guys, our domain is it goes to the left forever over on this one. It goes to the right forever. It even goes in between these two guys. It just doesn't cross these vertical asymptotes. So our domain is all x's except negative 3 and positive 3. So you can just say uh, negative 3 to positive 3, okay? And then the range, you guys, it's less than or equal to zero because of this graph, and then it's greater than two because of these two graphs right there, okay, but it's not including two. So this says uh, it's less than or equal to zero in union with or in addition to y is greater than two. All right, here's one that has a slant asymptote. Okay, so I didn't factor this. I should have, you guys. I don't think I did, but factors of negative 4 that add to 3 are plus 4 times a minus 1. Oh, I did. Good. Okay, so x plus 4, x minus 1. Okay, so when the top equals 0, it gives us the x-intercepts at negative 4 and 1. Okay, now check it out. These are going by 2s. So here's negative 4. Here's positive 1 right there, okay? And this graph is appropriately fit, okay? Now, we do have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So, whoops, I guess we're doing the slant asymptote right here, okay? So this, uh, since the degree in the top is 1 greater than the degree in the bottom, we get a slant asymptote by doing long division, okay? So we can do synthetic division with this. Anyway, so we do x times x gives us that x squared. Then we multiply x times x and then x times negative 2 right there. And then we wrap it with parentheses and subtract, okay? So 
So these cancel. 3 minus a minus 2 is 3 plus 2, which is 5. Okay, slide down that, and then x times 5 will get us uh, that 5x right there. And then so we multiply and we subtract, and, and negative 4 minus a minus 10 is negative 4 plus 10, which is 6. Now when we're dealing with asthmatotes, we're talking about end behavior, you guys. So when we talk about end behavior, when x goes to infinity, the remainder becomes an insignificant part. So this is our slant asthmatote right here, y equals x plus 5, okay? So always disregard the remainder when we're talking about asthmatotes. Okay, so plus 5, so here's 4, here's 6, so it's right there. And then x plus 5, the slope is 1, or 1 over 1. So from 5, we go up 1 over 1, or we can go down 5 to the left 5, okay? So right there. So I think that would be a little bit easier. That's the same as 1 right there, okay? There's our slant asthmatote right there, y equals x plus 5. Sorry, it's in green. All right, and then we got a vertical asthmatote uh, when this denominator equals 0. Okay, so now let's plug in some points right here. We'll just deal a little bit right here, and then over here, we'll just see what this uh, graph is doing, okay? So I'm just saving time. I just plugged in. Here's a negative 8. Here's negative uh, 4 right here. I could have done negative 6. Okay, here's, um, uh, I should have done negative 1 right there. But I didn't. Uh, here's x equals 1. Well, we already know um, when uh, x equals 1, we get 0. And when x equals negative 4, we get 0 there. So there's those right there. And then when we plug it in, we get those values for the other ones. And then when we graph all of those, we get those points. Okay, so I can see since I'm approaching uh, the asthmatotes, it's going through those points. It's doing something like that, okay? All right, and then if that's not enough, then just plug in some more points. Okay, so the graph goes to the left forever because of this part. It goes to the right forever because of this part, but it doesn't cross this line, so x does not equal negative 2 is our domain. And then uh, it goes below this one. This is at y equals 2, so y is less than or equal to 2 is our range in union with. Looks like it starts up again at, at y equals 12, so y is greater than or equal to 12 right there. All right, you guys, I'm going to stop there, and uh, it's right before break, so we aren't having an assignment with this. We will in the next one. Take care.